Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to continue with the last of our decision rules, which is called the payback rule. So we looked at the net present value, the IRR, and the equivalent annual annuity, and today we're going to look at the payback. Um, so just to take an example and explain what payback means. Okay, so today, if we want to do this investment, we have to <coughs> pay 300. Okay, payback is then a question of how long does it take until we get our money back. So after one year, we receive 50. So then we have 300 we paid. We have received 50, so there's still 250, 250 to recover from this investment. So in the second year, we get another 70. So then we had 250, we received 70, and there's still 180 to go. In the third year, we receive 80. So then we have 180 minus 80, which is 100 to go. And in the fourth year, we receive 100, and then all of the initial investment of 300 have been recovered over these four years. So 50 plus 70 plus 80 plus 100 is equal to 300. So it takes us four years until we get our initial investment back. Okay, so <clears throat> what does that mean? Well, we ignore the fifth year, who cares? We get our money back after four years, anything that happens afterward, well, that's good I guess, but we're not really interested in that because we're looking at the payback. Um, Okay, so then the question would be, the payback period of project is four years, should we make this investment? That's the question, and how do we decide? Uh, so remember, when we talked about financial decisions, we always say that we should give up resources today in the hope of obtaining something good in the future. Well, when it comes to the payback period, the only thing that really matters is that we give up resources today, let's get it back as fast as possible. We don't look at the entire future, we want it back in a short period of time. Um, so the payback period then, the decision rule is that you make investments which has a payback period that is less than a pre-specified length of time. So for example, if I'm the CEO of a company, I say I only want to make investments which, pay, which are paid back within two years. And that means that all investments which take longer than two years to uh, pay back, we should not do them. We should only make investments which very fast recover their value or their investment. Um, what are the advantages? Well, it's extremely simple. Does it take two years to get back the money? Oh, sorry, does it take longer than two years? Don't do it. Does it only take two years? Okay, let's do it. So it's very easy and simple to understand. Uh, it's a focus on cash flows, which we said is important, so that should be good. And also, I guess it's intuitive. When do we get our money back? How long time does it take? It's has a certain appeal to it. But it ignores the time value of money, which we have focused a lot on here and said it's very important. Also, what is an acceptable payback period? I mean, should I take, say, do it in three years or no? Or should it be four years or should it be two years? How do I decide what is an acceptable payback period? And I mean, shouldn't it depend on the investment? If I buy a computer, maybe it will be worthless in five years. So if it hasn't paid back by then, it's bad. But Let's say I invest a lot of money in a new uh, machine or a property, I mean, like an entire building. Maybe I should have a longer period than just five years before it pays back because it's probably going to live longer. And also it ignores whatever happens after the cutoff point. We don't care. It might give us very high positive cash flows in the next 20 years. It doesn't matter. We don't care about that. Only the first, let's say, three years is important here. So, for example, if we have a decision rule that says no more than two years is acceptable, this investment would not be uh, good because we said we need to get this 300 back within two years. After two years, we only received 120, so no, it's not good. Whatever happens here, who cares? It's not important in this case. But we might say that we need to get it back in four years. That's acceptable. Ah, all of a sudden, after four years, we found earlier that it pays back in four years. So this is probably a good investment. And I mean, this arbitrary choice of the length can make the difference and say this is a good investment or this is a bad investment. And that's everything it takes. Um, so, to take a very short example, what is the payback period of this investment? Okay, so we have to look at the uh, cash flows. Uh, so, it costs 75,000 today, then we receive 15,000 per year. 
and at the end of the 10 years we receive another 10,000. So after one year uh, we would have Sixty thousand to recover. After two, so this is one year. After two years, we would have uh, forty-five thousand to recover. After three years, it would be thirty thousand to recover. And then it would take another two years before we get those thirty thousand. So the payback period in this time. is two years, uh, sorry, not two years, five years. Okay, five years. So the investment goes on for 10 years, but we get our money back in five years. And then if the acceptable payback period is less than five years, let's say four years, we should not make this investment. If the accepted payback period is six years, then we should make this investment. Okay, so we looked at earlier NPV, which is the benchmark. Then you can calculate the present value of all the future cash flows and you do the investment if NPV is greater than zero. With the payback period, you calculate the time until the initial investment is recovered. And then you make the investment if this payback period is less than some pre-specified accepted payback period. But again, it's very hard to know what should this period be. And we ignore almost everything that we says is important in the other videos. So Maybe not the best model. And that's it for today. Thank you very much.